Actually, if a person is not prepared, at the last minute, it's very hard to do anything. Facing death is not a hundred meters dash. It's a long, long uh, run. So we have to prepare ourselves uh, over a period of years. Then only we can face death. So if somebody is ignorant, uh, and then at the last minute uh, you try to teach the person some Dhamma or anything, uh, it's no use. The mind is not uh, tuned to Dhamma. What is important uh, is the everyday mind. Our everyday mind, uh, the state of our mind every day uh, is extremely important. That is your natural frequency. So when we die, uh, the doctor will examine your breath, uh, you stop breathing, and examine your pulse, your heart has stopped beating, and then the doctor will say, oh, this person is dead. But actually, that person is not dead because the mind is still going on. And the mind may go on for another one hour or two hours or three hours. During those moments, uh, that person is not conscious of the outside world. Uh, that person is only conscious of whatever is in his mind. So the mind is in a state of dreaming. Uh, so that state uh, depends on your everyday mind. If a person uh, is always uh, chasing after worldly things, uh, then when that person is dying, uh, he will also think about all the worldly things. Uh, uh. And if that person is a bad-tempered, violent type of person, uh, uh, then that last minute uh, his thoughts uh, would be fighting and all that, and uh, be reborn as an animal, uh, probably. Uh. But if that person uh, is a cultured person uh, who practices the Dhamma, who loves the Dhamma, then when that person is dying, uh, his thoughts will be on Dhamma. And the Buddha said uh, that kind of thoughts will bring you up to a good rebirth. So whatever you see to that person at that last minute uh, is no use. When his eyes are open, when his ears are open, he can listen to whatever you say. The moment uh, his heart stops beating uh, and uh, he stops breathing, uh, then uh, his thoughts will run. And those thoughts uh, have nothing to do with your talk. Those thoughts uh, are his everyday thoughts. And his everyday thoughts uh, will bring him to his rebirth. Mm. So you know, you know, it doesn't matter what you say to him in the last moment. It doesn't matter at all. You know, most of us, uh, especially lay people, uh, uh, we chase after different things in life. Uh. When you are young, you want to have a good education. And after you have a good education, you want to have a good partner. After you have a good partner, you want to have nice children. Then uh, at the same time, you want to make a lot of money. Uh, then uh, you want to get a nice big house to stay in, nice car to drive, etc. Then at the end of life, uh, you find uh, all these things are not important. Uh, at the end of life, when you are dying, uh, what is important to you? Firstly, the good deeds that you did, the good deeds that you did to others. Secondly, uh, the evil deeds that you did uh, to others, uh, you'll be very remorseful. Mm. Mm. Thirdly, uh, the things that could have made you advance spiritually, uh, the steps uh, or the, uh, uh, the spiritual path, uh, if you did not uh, make enough effort, uh, after having come to the Dhamma, knowing the Dhamma, and you did not make enough effort, you also regret very much. A few years ago, there was a man from Kuala Lumpur who came to our Jamo monastery to stay for two weeks. And everybody liked him because he was a very good cook. He was <laughs> very popular with people. But then he came, he was not used to monastery life, not used to not having dinner. So he didn't keep his pizza very well. He would hide some biscuit in his kuti to eat at night, uh, which I later found out. 
so after that na he he left na. and maybe he thought na monastery life na, is too too difficult na. at night also no dinner so he did come back uh, then na, a few late years later na, maybe four years later three or four years later he came back one day then i looked at him and i said what happened to you because his face was dark very dark so he told me i have cancer terminal cancer he said uh, i came back to say uh, i regret very much i extreme regret extremely i didn't come back to practice in the monastery so uh, after that he went back to KL and friends visited him also he told them he regret very much they come back to the monastery uh, to keep the eight precepts to practice and shortly after that he passed away so you see uh, when we have the chance uh, to progress spiritually uh, we don't make the effort is very important uh, having come to the dhamma to learn the dhamma enough so that you get right view because once you get right view uh, you are secure unnya be loki ko to le that is most important uh, in samsara in the cycle of birth and death uh, i don't mind going on forever uh, if i can always be reborn in the heavenly world right you also i'm sure you don't mind uh, being in samsara forever and ever uh, if you are always in the good rebirth isn't it uh, what we are afraid of uh, is rebirth uh, in the ghost realm in the animal realm and worse in the hell realm these three we are afraid of right uh, but once you have right view uh, then you will never be reborn as a ghost or an animal or go to hell ah uh, safe now then uh, slow boat out of samsara also never mind <laughs> right uh, once you have become an arya uh, i think uh, your contact uh, your merit is so great uh, even you come back as a human being also i think uh, you'll have a good life and many of the buddha's disciples sons of the very rich men in town right uh, having four wives and they have slaves go to heaven also 500 devis uh, as your wife <laughs> so uh, so it's very important uh, now that we have come to the right dhamma the true dhamma to make an effort if you don't make an effort uh, then uh, when you are passing away and uh, that will be your greatest regret because human life is very difficult to get uh, and our human life here uh, will determine uh, the next many many lifetimes it does not only influence your next life you know it influences many lifetime after that because in this human birth uh, we create a lot of karma when you are born in other realms uh, you reap the effects of your karma as a human being in heaven uh, you don't create much karma you only enjoy 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 you suck your good karma and when you go to hell uh, you have to pay back pay back pay back pay back all your evil karma or you are born as a ghost or an animal uh, There's no chance to create karma. You're just paying back, paying back. Uh, so human life span, uh, lifetime uh, is very crucial, very very crucial. So we must not be careless. Uh, to be extremely careful. Uh, don't at the last moment uh, regret this and regret then. Imagine now uh, that you have a second chance in life. Uh, a lot of people don't have it. Uh, suddenly. they know they got cancer and within one or two months they pass away just like uh, this chinese new year one of my devotees uh, in para state uh, said uh, just before new year uh, the sister in law phone her and said uh, coming back for chinese new year asked her to cook this and cook that and before she could come back suddenly she found she got cancer and then went to check uh, found that the lung uh, collapsed already uh, i had to go to hospital uh, take out that lung 
and then suddenly yeah, found that the cancer spread already. Uh, now we're just waiting for death. And then uh, she told my devotee, uh, she said that she could regret very much uh, that she did not take an uh, interest in religion. Uh, before she got sick, uh, she used to laugh at my devotee and uh, spending so much time uh, uh, with your Buddhist monastery uh, and all these things. And now that she is on the brink of death, uh, then only she understands uh, that she is not prepared for death at all. Uh, so her greatest regret uh, did not take any interest in religion. We should live our life uh, like the scout, uh, be prepared. Uh, anytime you go for a checkup, suddenly you find out oh, you got cancer. Among the Chinese, uh, most of the Malaysians who get cancer are Chinese. On the average in Malaysia, one in four people get cancer. So among the Chinese, you can say one in three. One in three. So your chances of getting cancer are very, very high. Uh, but anyway, whether the doctor tells you you got cancer or not, the Buddha already said nah, that you all have cancer. Yeah, what? In the Sutta, the Buddha said nah, you have cancer. Anytime you can die. You don't know when you're going to die. And life is very short, very, very short. When you don't expect it, nah, suddenly nah, you find you're going to die. Already. Like this lady, never expect nah, when I come home for Chinese New Year, uh, want to celebrate. Uh, suddenly, uh, cannot enjoy anymore. Many years ago, one of our Penang devotees, uh, the husband, was dying. So the doctor said uh, within three months uh, definitely he will die. But after that he didn't die. And he dragged on month after month. So this old lady asked me and another monk to go to the house to do some chanting for this old man. So when we went to the house, we saw this old man uh, was all skin and bones. He should be dead already but he refused to die. And he was so weak uh, that his mouth opened and uh, could not close his mouth. Uh. So we did some chanting for him. And after that, we left. Uh, within five minutes, he passed away. So some people are like that. They don't go off uh, because they, they don't have enough good karma. So uh, they know uh, they are going to take rebirth in the ghost realm or animal realm. So they are scared. So as long as you cling on to life, uh, you won't die. Our mind is very strong. You know? uh, we are not willing to die. Yeah? Even your body is rotting. Uh, I just recently somebody told me the mother's body rotting already and yet she refused to die. Pus already coming out from the mouth. Uh, actually rotting already and yet she refused to die. Holding on to life. So this person uh, then not scared of dying because not enough good karma. Oh uh, yeah, he lied. So... When we did some chanting for him, uh, he felt assured. No? He felt assured. So then he let go. He passed away. But that does not mean he'll go to a good place. Uh, at the last moment, uh, he feels peaceful. No? But once he closes his eyes and is clinically dead, no? then the mind will continue to go. No? And that depends on his karma. If his karma is good, it brings him to a good people. If his karma is no good, Still full of greed, hatred, and delusion, put a bad reaper.